the smoke has arrived in our elite collection. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Kai Wrecker, representing One Half the Gladiators and representing the Crash Man Wrestling Podcast. Coming to another video review. And today, I have a double review for you. Today, I'll be reviewing the WWE Elite Series 81, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford, The Street Profits. That's right. Finally, we got elites of The Street Profits. Like, I've been looking forward to these guys for quite a while. The Street Profits have definitely grown on me, like, in the coming year. Well, well, in the last year, because I wasn't a huge fan of them at first, but now I'm like, I love the Street Profits. I'm so glad we finally got elites of them. I do have mixed feelings about about Dawkins here, but we'll get into that later on. Anyways, before we take a look at the figures, take a look at the packaging first. Now, each box is pretty much the same, so I'm not going to go like too deep into it. Anyways, of course, you got your pictures of them on the front. And this is also my first opportunity to talk about you know, the new packaging, how they put the certified authenticity uh, badge on the front, which I think is actually pretty cool. Names on the front there. Series 81 at the top. Pictures of them on the side there. And then other pictures of them in the outfits. And then the back, I believe they have the same bio, but they have different stats, so you can pause right there if you want to read. And the other figures in the set, we got The Rock, Shinsuke Nakamura, of course, The Street Profits, Stunning Steve Austin, and Bianca Belair. The Rock, as disappointing as that figure is, I still want to get him because it's the first elite figure of him with his new tattoo. And plus, I'm a big fan of The Rock because he's, he's my favorite of all time. Shinsuke Nakamura, I cannot wait to get my hands on him. That Shinsuke Nakamura figure looks awesome, especially the regular in the blue and black. Plus, I want to get the new Intercontinental Championship he comes with, even though I got a custom of it. Stunning Steve Austin, I'm probably going to pass on him unless I get my hands on the Elite 47B uh, Brian Pillman figure so I can go along with that uh, for the tag team. If I get Brian Pillman, then I'll get Steve Austin, but for now, I'll pass. Bianca Belair, oh my god, I freaking want that figure so bad. A fantastic women's Elite figure, and plus it'll go along great with the Street Profits here since obviously Bianca Belair is married to Montez Ford. So it would be great to bring the trio back together because that figure is phenomenal. So expect reviews of The Rock, Shinsuke, and Bianca Belair coming soon. Anyways, that's about it for the packaging. So let's open up the Street Profits and see what we got. We'll be right back. All right, so here you have the Street Profits. Open up now their packaging. Now, honestly, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but these figures are kind of a mixed bag. Uh, there's some things about them I really, really like, but there's also some things about them that are very disappointing. And as I'll get into that. First up, we'll get into the biggest disappointment, Angelo Dawkins. So we might as well get him out of the way. All right, first up, his accessories. He comes with uh, three pairs of interchangeable hands. He has, a, he, of course, he has two fists. He has two standard uh, uh, um, gripping hands, or his mic holding hands, as some people call them. And also, I don't know what to call these hands, but we've seen them before with um, with Tommaso Ciampa and Ricochet. So it's nice to see those. Of course, he does come with his uh, his headband, which uh, sorry Montez, which Montez doesn't stand up that well either. Which I'll get I'll get into that later. Yes, but, uh, but he comes with a different headband, which is different than the one that came with the basic. This one says Street Profits Never Loss, which is pretty cool, and it does come off. It does come off? It's made the same mold that's the headband that came with uh the basic it's the same mold see it has a little cut there for his ear pretty nice and of course the main accessory that everybody likes to talk about with this figure is this beautiful jacket it's pretty much the same material that was used on the elite 74 finn balor as was the tommaso champa uh, as was the uh defining moment sting i'm sorry the, uh, not tommaso champa the, the defining moment sting in the elite series 74 finn balor beautiful jacket it has the street profits logo there on the front and on the back, and it is Velcro removable. Anyways, now here he is, ready for action. Head scan is exactly the same as the basic, except I think the true effects is much better on the Elite than it is on the uh, on the basic, which I'll get into that later when I get to the comparisons. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people have had this problem. They have this tiny little black uh, scratch up here on his forehead, but that's okay. It'll cover up by the headband. Anyways, now this is pretty much the attire that the basics were supposed to come in. They were supposed to be in this red and white attire, but the Street Profits specifically requested to be the green and gold attire from Super Showdown. So they were able to do that. So this is what, so this is originally what we we're supposed to get on the in the basics with the uh, red and white. But I'm glad we got him in the elites because um because I like the attires more and they're kind of like more. Cut kind of like their more recognizable attire, so it would make sense for them to get into elites. And it has the Street Profits logo on the front, and awesome shorts. I like these shorts a lot with the uh, with the Street Profits logo there. 
and the white straps over the uh, stripes all over the place. Now here's where we get into the problems with this figure. Of course, I do uh, like the shoes there, and kind of socks at the bottom. Now here's where we get into the problems. First up, his torso and his arms. They're way too big. Now Dawkins is a big guy, but he's not this big. I mean, these are Braun Strowman arms and a Braun Strowman torso. He's not this gigantic. I mean, good lord. And unfortunately, the basic had the same problem. They put the uh, the AOP torso on it, which is originally what I thought they were going to use on here because it's it's big, but it's not too big. Here, it's way too big. Now, because it has the Braun Strowman torso and the arms, it does limit the posability in his arms, like especially with the shoulders here. And the ab crunch is really, really loose. Now, the other problem is the legs. Now, first, the positive with the legs. It has pinless joints. I love the pinless joints. Like, like, I like that. If I bring Samoa Joe, you'll see what I mean. See, it has like, so you can see the pins in his knees. Where, where normally you would see them right about here in the joint, but now you don't see them anymore. Now, because they're pinless, it makes them very hard to do part swaps, and also it makes it very hard for these knees to move. You can move the bottom joint here on the knee, but you can't move the top joint. Like, it's so stiff, you can't move it. So, so you don't really want to force it because you're going to rip his entire leg off and you're going to break the figure, which you don't really want to do that, especially because how expensive these figures can get sometimes. So that's really a shame. So that makes this figure very disappointing. He's way too big and also the limited posability. So that really sucks. I mean, if you can get over all that, if you're going to use it as a display piece, it's a fine figure, I guess. But like I said, it's a it's ridiculous how huge he is because he's not this big. I mean, he is a big guy in real life, but he's not this big. You know what I mean? So Dawkins is okay, but he's very disappointing because of how big he is. Now on to the figure that pretty much everybody freaking loves from this, from this set, Montez Ford. Montez is freaking awesome. Like I said, I love Montez, and this figure is pretty good too. However, there is a couple of complaints with him. First up, his accessories. He comes with a pair of interchangeable hands. He has these standard hands, which are kind of like what you call the choke slamming hands that you see on the Big Show and Kane. But he also comes with the I don't know what you would call them, the you can't see me hands, I guess, with the glove with the gold glove hands on them, which I love that. Which I think they're actually really cool hands. He does uh, come with some of the coolest accessories. Every comes with the crown for King Tez. Sorry, mine's a little stiff. There it is. Very nice crown. I love this crown. It's pretty cool. Hang on. I can get it. I can get it to focus. Zoom in there. There we go. Nice detail on the crown. And he does come with the cup, which is freaking awesome. It says King Tez. Now I kind of wish I had the white trim around it to make it look more authentic, but that's okay. So a pretty nice cup. Of course, he does come with the glasses, which unfortunately mine are a little scratched up, but, but that's okay. Now, unfortunately, when you put them on, they don't go all the way back to his ears. If I can put them back on. See, they don't really go back to his ears, but they do stay on because of how wide his head are, uh, his head is, and because of how thin the glasses are, it stays on very well. Like, it's not a loose fit. You know, they stay on just fine. And then he does come with this pretty cool vest. However, here's where my complaint comes in. This is a pain in the butt to button these. It took me so long to get this in. Like, I must have been messing with this for, like, five minutes trying to get this in. Like, I had to, like, really dig my nails in there to get the tabs in those holes. So once you take this off, it's going to be very hard to get those back in. So that's why I hate these rubber accessories. And it has a Street Profits logo on the back and the front. And it does have very nice detail on the pockets and the zipper. Here, let's take this thing off. It's gonna take me forever to get it back on anyway. Get that off. Anyway, so here's Montez Ford, ready for action. Head scan, awesome. I love this head scan. This is a brand new head scan. It's different from his basic, and I like this one a little bit better because it definitely has expression. However, <laughs> I agree with a lot of people said. He looks like he had, like, man, Montez, you really wanted the smoke, but you had too much smoke, dude. <laughs> but at least it looks like him. However, I do agree that his hairline is a little, his hairline is a little too far back, but that's okay. Good torso choice. I like this. However, it is limited because of how 
the uh, the sculpting on the abs it makes the ab crunch not that poseable tattoos are awesome like they definitely captured his ink like i love these tattoos and i like the pants as well the uh the red pants she probably still go on the side nothing there white stripes all over the place on the shoes now here comes the complaints about montez just like dawkins he has the pinless joints which i can bend the knees just fine but they do actually have this little scratch uh i don't know if you can see that like that little scratch right there so that's gonna make and it's and it's rough like it's rough these are smooth the legs are smooth but then but the knees are very rough so that makes you think if they use this mold on other figures and they paint stuff on it it's going to rub off very easily and also unfortunately he has the old shoe mold that we saw on john cena elites like elite series 3 and elite series 7 which makes these extremely loose very easily so therefore this figure is very difficult to stand up because his ankle joints are so loose, he does not stand up at all. That's why he fell over quite a few times in this review already. Because of these ankle joints. They're very loose. Even if they're tight when you first get them, they become loose very, very easily. So I might need to put some crazy glue or some of that in the joint to like rough it up. And also, just like Dawkins' limited articulation, he does not have an upper leg joint right here, like right where the boot would be on the calf. Like it does swivel down here at the shoe. But it would have been nice if it, if, it, if it could swivel down here. But like on like on Dawkins, you can rotate, even though he has the shorts, you can still rotate his calf. So I wish they would have done that on, on Montez. So that's a little disappointing. Anyways, but I'll go over the articulation of what you do get. I'll do it with Montez, because he's the easier one to move around. Head can rotate 360. Can look down, kind of. Kind of look up, I guess. Arms, rotate 360, in and out. Rotate the bicep, bend the elbow, rotate the wrist, and and hinge at the wrist as well. Ab crunch, move that, that far forward, which is very disappointing. And that far back, swivel waist. Legs forward, about that far. And back to the original position. Then go in and out. Rotate the thigh. Double jointed knee, which is much better than Dawkins, because you can't move the top joint. And swivel the shoe and hinge at the shoe, but it's a little tight, and ankle pivot. That's about it. So it's a shame that there's no calf joint, because that would have been very nice for certain poses. Anyways, these figures are a little disappointing, but at least they're much better than the basics. But whatever. And speaking of those basics, I'm going to do a little comparison with the basics. So let me bring those in for a sec. Okay, so here we have the Elite Series 81 Street Profits next to their Basic Series 108 counterparts. And look how gigantic these basics are compared to the Elites. I mean, if I bring in Dawkins here. See, as you see, the basic like towers over his Elite. Good lord. Now, now let me mention what I mentioned about the, about the head sculpt. As I see, I think the true effects on the Elite is much better than the basic. I think it looks more like him, and they definitely did a better job, especially the eyes. But it is just ridiculous how big he is compared to the Elite. Like, like the basic is compared to the Elite. I mean, good lord. And it's the same thing with, uh, with Montez Ford. It's the same thing. Let me zoom out here. Let's bring in Montez. Again, same thing. The basic is huge compared to the, uh, compared to the Elite in terms of how tall he is. Now here's the difference between the head scans. I don't know, which one do you like better? Do you like the basic or the elite? Personally, I like the um, the elite because of how much it looks like him. But the basic, I like the expression better because they could have done a better job with the expression on the elite. Because he looks too, you know what I mean. Looks like he had too much smoke. And they definitely got the uh, the hairline much better on the basic. As you see, the elite, the, uh, with the elite, it's too far back. Anyway, so I can't believe how tiny these elites are compared to the uh, to the basics. So that's another disappointing thing. But they just can't seem to get it right. Whatever. So final thoughts, these figures are kind of a letdown. Like I said, I still like them. They're, they're definitely much better than the basics, but these figures are still disappointing. Anyways, uh, complaints for, for Dawkins, the limited articulation in his legs, as well as how big his torso and arms are. They're way too big. Now with Montez 4, the only problems I really have with Montez is the loose um, foot joints and his vest is a pain in the butt to, uh, to get on, especially, especially with the buttons. 
But aside from that, these are these are okay figures. I mean, they are improvements over the basics, but that doesn't mean they're like phenomenal figures. Ugh, these were kind of disappointing. Anyways, I would say if you're a Street Profits fan and if you prefer elites over basics, then get these. But if you're just like a casual fan of the Street Profits, go with the basics. Because I think you're getting more with your money because the articulation isn't that limited on them. And the detail is fine for what you get with them. Over the elites, like I said, you definitely get your money's worth in terms of the accessories, but not with like the sculpting and everything. Like in the accuracy and everything. So I would say if you're a Street Profits fan, if you're a Street Profits fan and you prefer collecting elites, then go with these. I mean, these are definitely better uh, than the than the basics because you get more posability. To, well, even though some of it's limited, you get accessories and you definitely get their more trademark attire because most people remember the Street Profits in their red and white attire. So I was saving him for a good price, pick them up, but they definitely might need some fix-ups because of how big they are if you want them to be like extremely accurate. But if you don't mind that, get them. So I give Angelo Dawkins a 6 out of 10 because of how big he is. Montez, I give him a 7.5. So I was saying, pick him up if you can, if you don't mind all the flaws. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check those out. You can catch me on the Crash Me Wrestling Podcast just about every Friday and Saturday. Link to our channel is down below. And be sure to get your official Kai Record merch on my store on bonfire.com. Check that out. Link down below. Anyways, and be sure to uh, click on the subscribe. Uh, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. I, I upload new reviews every single Saturday right here on the channel, so stay tuned for more reviews. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys. Bye.